So hello everyone, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. I wish that all this new year will be a new beginning for all of us. So we know that in a few days, we will be celebrating the Feast of Epiphany. So can anybody tell me what does Epiphany means? If you know the answer, you can put it in the chat box. Well, in the church, we celebrate Epiphany as the manifestation of the divine, the manifestation of the supernatural being, God. It happens on the 12th day of Christmas. That's why in every year, we celebrate it on the 6th of January. So based on the calculation, it takes about 12 days for the three Magis to travel from the time they saw the star to where the Belen is, no? That's why in many songs it says they traveled from afar. So maybe some trivial questions for tonight. You could type in the chat box if you still remember the name of the three wise men. Okay, I'll give you a bit of time. Maybe you can type your names in the chat box. Okay, so the names are Melchor, Casper, and Balthasar. Okay, I hope some of you got it right. Mm -hmm. What about their professions? What do you think are their professions? What is the kind of job that they do during that time, the three wise men? Okay, you can type in the chat box. I don't know if you are doing your Googling no, to get the answers, but... We were told, no, from, from, um, from traditions that they are actually astrologers. Uh, some says that they are stargazers, no? And, and many says that they are dreamers. Okay. One more question. What animals did, did you think that they are riding on, no? During that time, from the time they saw the star to the manger, what kind of animals did they use as transportation? Would it be donkeys? Would it be camels? Or would it be horses? Okay, the correct answers according to traditions is not camels nor donkeys, but horses. No, because horses are usually used by people who are wealthy, who are rich. So they suspect that they are probably riding on horses, no? Although in many times we see pictures, no, showing camels, which is unlikely. Okay, so the church commemorates the visit of the three wise men in a very significant, uh, as a very significant event, no, where God reveals Himself to humanity. Because in many ways, in 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 many many occasions in the Old Testament, when God speaks, He normally speaks through the prophets. No, they He will appoint mediators and He speaks through them. But with the birth of Jesus. God speaks to us directly, you no? Know? In these days, God's no longer, um, like in the Old Testament, you no? Know, that the people will have to go to the prophets before they hear God. He, with the coming of Jesus, God speaks to us directly. And, and this is so beautiful, you no? Know, that God makes himself very reachable. God makes himself accessible to all of us. So as we begin this new year, we are all invited to imitate the three wise men, no, in their attitudes, in their disposition, in this constant search for God. So we know that these wise men are actually dreamers, no? They often look up into the sky for something big, something good to come. They hold on to hope in times of despair. So to better understand the context in which uh, they were living in, we know that during the birth of Jesus, there was a lot, a lot of political unrest. There was a lot of injustice, oppressions during that time, like what we're experiencing right now. And so we are told in the chapter 2 of Matthew that Jesus was born in the time when King Herod was the political leader. And who is King Herod? He was a king who was very obsessed no, with power and fame. So the birth of the king, but the birth of Jesus became a threat for him. When he heard from the three wise men 
that a new king of Israel will be born, he was so insecure because of his low self-esteem, he started to plot the death of the newborn king. And when he realized that he was tricked by the three wise men, what did he do? He, he, he gave a command, no? he ordered that all children be killed uh, in and around Bethlehem. And those who were two years old and under, imagine, he was so insecure. Baby Jesus was just born. Why did he not just kill those babies? No, one year and below or half a month, half a year and below. He killed all of the boys or infants from two years and below. Have you ever wondered how many innocent infants were massacred on this particular event? Just because of the insecurity and low self-esteem of King Herod. Well, there were many, many debatable numbers, no? One of the number that is probably acceptable, it's 14,000. Imagine 14,000 children were slaughtered just because of his insecurity. So in times of social and political injustice and unrest, where the people live in fear, disappointments and uncertainties, it is all the more we are invited to dream like the three wise men for a better tomorrow. The three wise men is a symbol of hope, of, of a symbol of never giving up in challenging times. They teach us to keep walking in times of uncertainty, not to stop dreaming the impossible. They teach us to stand firm in what we believe, despite the obstacles and challenges, and to keep fixing our eyes, to fix our eyes on God. What about you? What is your dream for this year? at a personal level, for your family work, for your country, and for the world. What the wise men were dreaming is for a, the highest level according to the Maslow hierarchy of needs. No? Maybe you have heard of this word. According to the Maslow hierarchy, there are different levels of needs. The lowest level is the physiological, where you, where you care about your food, your clothing, what you eat, your sleeping. And then the second level it will be safety where you talk about your home, uh, job security, having a safe space. And then once you have that need, uh, need met, you move on to the next need, which is love and belonging, wanting intimacy, wanting friendship. And then it moves up to the next level, which is self-confidence, self-esteem, and it reaches the next level, which is self-actualization. And finally, the highest level is transcendental. So we can see that King Herod was actually stuck in the lower level of the needs. No, he was still stuck in safety. He was um, very low self-esteem. He probably didn't have many friends. So he was actually stuck in the lower level of needs. Whereas the three wise men have already reached the highest level above self-actualization, aspiring for what is transcendental. What about us? Which level are you right now? Perhaps in year 2023, we can aspire for a higher order of spiritual excellence. We can aspire for transcendental values. And these values can encompass those that will not, will not die, you know, when we die. For example, compassion, love, support. Uh, these are transcendental values, uh, in opposed to money. Money will, you know, just disappear when we die. But love never ends. So in year 2023, we are asked to aspire for more, for things above and not things on earth. And what well, I was asking the Lord, what is for you transcendental? In 1 Timothy 2 4, God reveals that what is transcendental is eternal life. God desires and wills that all people be saved and come to know the truth. God desires that everyone is saved, that, that salvation is for all men. And this too is our mission for this year. The mission is, that is entrusted by Jesus to his disciples, to bring people to God, to help them to know who God really is, to, to connect with God. So perhaps as one of our objectives for the year, I would invite you or I would challenge you, you know, for this year to put as one of your aim, you know, that you will 
you will be able to bring one person, one friend, or two to come and pray in the soul and, and continue to, to search for God uh, for spiritual excellence. And we know that the three Magis did not go empty-handed. No, they were very Filipino. They bring Pasalubong to Jesus. So they have brought the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to pay homage to the Lord. What about us? What would be your precious gift to the Lord this year? I have put here in this PowerPoint several suggestions no, that you can uh, make as an objective that you would like to bring as an offering uh, to God. It could be uh, any of these no, that are being fleshed. Uh, you could want to seek God in everything, have more time for prayer, patience and forgiveness, or even to give up something no, that could be an obstacle to our spiritual light. So we can make an option today, the start of the year, to, to make an offering, a gift to baby Jesus. And of course, we cannot be an offering and a blessing to others if we don't receive blessings from God. So in number six, which we have in January 1, the reading, the first reading of every year, is that God will bless us. God will bless us in everything you do, in every task, in everything that you entrusted to us this year. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May he let his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look upon us with kindness and give us peace. And so we begin this year asking God for his blessings so that we too can be blessings for others. And so in this time of prayer, I invite you, you know, to, to ask God in what way and how does he want you to aspire spiritual excellence and at the same time, what are the blessings that you want from him so that you too can become blessings for others?